Peter Tingle. At this point, I bet Audi has paid for 10% of the entire MCU budget with their oppressive product placement in these movies. Well, how do you want cars displayed in these films? The cringy way Korea uses products they don't want to pay royalties on? By putting a big-ass sticker on the logo of the car? I mean, who gives a shit? What are we, fighting the weather now? Locals say the cyclone had a face. Oh, people see things when they're under stress. Like a giant green hulk, or a Norse god who wields a hammer, or a woman in black spandex wielding a glock. I'm just saying, with the superheroes and villains that exist, is a weather monster that far out of the box? I agree that Hill's incredulity seems kind of misplaced, especially considering she's a goddamn scroll, but you just included Black Widow in this list of unbelievable things, so picking on Widow cliche. 36 seconds of Marvel logo, a minute and 47 seconds into the movie, and after we had to sit through 32 seconds of Sony getting the upper hand logos at the beginning of the movie. Nearly nine seconds of whining about the film letting us know who the film is made by, which is compounded by the fact that this movie isn't like a normal MCU movie because it's made by Sony. That fat copyright claim that ruined the earning potential on my parody video is a major reason I'm salty about this. Gone but not forgotten. Why is the school news station doing an in-memoriam about the dead Avengers at the end of an entire school year? Wouldn't this have been something they broadcast on the first day of school? Well, not necessarily. This isn't a production made by the school, but by the students. Besides, do you think that they had the information they needed immediately when the blip happened? I would assume that they took a bit of time to get used to, you know, the billions of people that reappeared? Eight months ago, a band of brave heroes brought us back. Still calling bullshit on no one appearing in the exact same space as another human being causing some weird mutation strength. What you are asking for would have never happened in the first place. When the Hulk snapped and brought everyone back, his wish was to bring everyone back safely, which is why we didn't have people who were in planes falling to their deaths or hell, because Earth was in a different position anyway. When I blipped back to my apartment, the family that was Living there was very confused. I'm sure. And just imagine all the people that blipped back in the middle of the ocean because they were on a boat or landed on the third rail and died because they had been in a subway car. As I just explained, the Hulk's wish was to bring people back safely with regard to their original position when they were killed by Thanos. Otherwise, those people would literally be floating in the solar system. Can't be said enough, I hate, hate, hate Spider-Man wearing an iron suit. Yes, it does happen in the comics, you nerds, but it's relatively brief, and this is the second movie he's worn this suit in, and it's just not Spider-Man when he's in an iron armor. I'm on the record as not liking this Iron Spider suit simply because there was no reason to make it blue and not the classic yellow and red Iron Spider suit, but there are two things wrong with this. Number one, the Iron Spider suit in the comics isn't worn relatively briefly. It's worn for a long while during the Civil War event, and then worn again by Mary Jane. And number two, suggesting that it's not Spider-Man when he's wearing this costume is ignoring the fact that Spider-Man has always had multiple costumes and doesn't just settle on one look. If you look at the 2018 video game, he has 42 different costumes. And you're mad about one of the four featured in this movie? You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? Yeah. You don't send Nick Fury to voicemail. Did you hear that? I send everyone to voicemail. Brad Bird could call me and tell me Disney picked up the rights to my skip. How would he be able to pack that even if he wanted to? I'm assuming that giant charging port would have to come with it. Good luck explaining that at the airport before boarding an international flight. Well, he obviously doesn't want to, so this is a moot point. Besides, he would obviously take the classic suit if he were traveling internationally and wanted to bring a suit. This is a non-sin. This looks like a regular airplane, but look closer, and you will see that absolutely no one in coach is wishing they were dead right now. That's probably because this is United Airlines Economy Plus seating, which, as you can see in this picture, is quite roomy. Flash makes fun of Peter about being on an airplane, but also Flash is in first class. And yeah, he's rich, but what kind of a school trip lets individual rich students upgrade to first class on their own? I've never seen an instance of a school mandating that a student had to sit with the other students on a plane, and the only reason this does happen is because the vast majority of students can't afford first class. Hell, the majority of adults can't afford first class, so the real sin here is that a rich student goes to a regular-ass public high school. He blipped, so technically he's 16, not 21. And isn't that what his ID would say? They most certainly would have checked before serving him. Hey Jeremy, I'm aware that this is a science fiction fantasy film set in a world with aliens and mutants and all, but why do you think that Flash's ID would magically reflect that he was snapped? It would only show his birth date, so if they did check his ID, it would state that he is indeed 21. 
Heart of Iron. Heart of Iron? They made a Tony Stark documentary and they chose the title Heart of Iron? Why not Stark Realities? Or why not the MCU? Because those names are trash and Heart of Iron basically makes all the sense. We have a lot in common. So uh, we're boyfriend and girlfriend now. That was fast. I know that's the joke, but still. An eight-hour flight feels more like an excuse to get Peter alone for more of this film, and as such, it works. You said it yourself. That's the joke. Also, this does not serve to get Peter alone in this film, as Ned is basically there the entire time. The only time Ned isn't there is when Peter is fighting, and why would you want Ned there in that case? Also, why wouldn't Aunt May shove that suit under some clothes or something? She knows this is a secret identity, so her disregard for secrecy here makes no sense. I don't know, Jeremy. Probably because she's a regular person and didn't think that far ahead. Maybe she didn't have much time to sneak his costume into his luggage before he left. Aunt May has shown that she's somewhat aloof in these movies, and judging by Peter's reaction, this isn't something that he would have done. Do you get it yet? This is you sinning characterization yet again, and characterization is not a cinema sin. Are you telling me that in eight months since the unblippening, airports and public buildings worldwide have all unanimously decided to deify Tony Stark in massive artwork displays? Yeah, I would expect the world to basically talk non-stop about the person that has saved all their lives. I mean, people are still talking about Michael Jordan, and that dude charges $200 for shoes. Also, saying unblippening means you don't realize that the blip refers to the Hulk snap, not Thanos's. Put your bags off, we're gonna meet at the Da Vinci Museum at three. The you have two adults on this student trip and you're not going with them to the museum? You're letting them find their own way in Venice? Without an adult? These are essentially high school seniors. Besides, you're not going to take seniors to Europe and chaperone them 24-7 because I can tell you, if my teachers did that, I'd have gone home. What am I watching? What is this? Says everyone watching this video. I guess you could suspend my disbelief enough to believe that Mysterio would have his theatrics staged in Venice when Peter is there because, well, Peter is there. Except I don't know how he would know at this point that Peter is also Spider-Man. But regardless, I'm calling bullshit that he would know Peter would be at this exact place at the time he did this, so the whole scenario is built on an Italian river of lies! Wow, there is a shit ton of things that you missed, so let me break this down. Firstly, Beck knows who Spider-Man is because they found out who Stark was giving the glasses to. Tony wouldn't give Edith to a random kid, so the kid that he gave the glasses to would be special in some way. Also, a later scene has Talos tell Peter to take off his bass because everyone already knows who he is. Lastly, because Beck has this information, he can obviously track down Peter in his class, and if you watched my parody video, you would see that Beck and his group are there following Peter the entire time. Remember when everyone made fun of the Avengers for all wearing dad caps and sunglasses because we thought that disguise could never work on real people? Well, tell me how you feel when you realize you didn't see Mysterio right here. All right, I laughed. <laughs> screwball prop comedy in a f***ing Spider-Man movie? Sinning the MCU for being the MCU. I mean, of course all the DC fanboys are enjoying this, but fuck y'all. Who is that guy? I don't know, but he's kicking that water's ass. <laughs> yeah, he's removing a sin here, but this laugh. Pretty intense scene and all. Too bad we've already seen two much better versions of this scene with the train scene in Spider-Man 2 and the boat scene in Spider-Man Homecoming. And two much better movies, I could add, and I think I will. <laughs> Thinking Homecoming and Spider-Man 2 are better than this movie. <laughs> Close, but no. BuzzFeed says there's a sailor named Morris Bench who was exposed to an experimental underwater generator. The movie uses a likeness to a character from the comics called Hydro-Man, but it isn't actually Hydro-Man. However, movie has Flash talk about the origins of Morris Bench, aka Hydro-Man from the comics, anyways. Looks like the movies agree with me that the books do matter. Bada bop boom pow. Oh! You just shot Ned. Just a mild tranquilizer, he'll be all right. Sure, but what if he'd fallen on the side of his neck with the trank dart? Wouldn't it have then shoved the whole thing further into his neck and caused medical problems and Do you really think Talos cares? And he didn't, so the point is moot anyway. That's like asking, what if Ned had a heart attack? Wouldn't Betty be sad? How the hell are you sending a movie for something that could have, but didn't happen? I tried to bring you here, you avoided me, and now you're here. What a coincidence. Was this a coincidence? This movie doesn't even know its coincidences from its contrivances. There is so much irony in this sin. You could bring back Tony Stark. There are multiple realities, Peter. This is Earth, Dimension 616. I'm from Earth 833. Because Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse exists, the viewer accepts the idea of multiple universes. But in this world, the multiverse hasn't been explored yet. And it seems like Nick Fury would be on to Mysterio from the beginning, or simply call Doctor Strange and ask if this is legit, because this story is suspicious as hell. First of all, this is not Nick Fury, and you know this. So one sin for feigning ignorance. Second, the multiverse hasn't been explored yet? 
Did you or did you not watch Doctor Strange? Oh, that's right, you sinned that movie, so the answer to that question is obviously no. As a refresher, in Doctor Strange, Steven quite literally fights against someone from a parallel universe, Dormammu of the Dark Dimension. Even further, in that same movie, the Ancient One specifically states, This universe is only one of an infinite number. So, what were you lying? I mean, I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, sir. Bitch, please, you've been to space. <laughs> <laughs> Who laughs like this? Seriously. <laughs> Captain Marvel. Don't invoke her name. Why not? And for something like this that could destroy the f***ing world, why wouldn't you use Captain Marvel? She's stronger than everyone and everything. If you remember her line in Endgame, she intimates that Earth isn't the only planet that needs her help, and she helped to bring the Avengers back, so she's probably off on another planet under the assumption that the Avengers can handle whatever problems the Earth may face. The name of this road in English translates to Nobody Nope Road. The French call it Les Nope. This joke sucked so bad, I'm going to splice in what I said in the parody video. In case you confuse it with <laughs> Peter waited so long to put on these Stark glasses that I actually had forgotten all about them. I'm shocked he didn't put them on as soon as they were handed to him, come to think of it. So, let me get this straight. Jeremy is shocked that Peter didn't immediately put on these polarized glasses at night, which is when Talos gave them to him, while wearing his mask? Take off your clothes. This is a hell of a thing, considering her insistence he get naked to try on the suit is only in story service of giving Peter's rival something to use against him with MJ. But in addition to that, this should be creepy. It's played for laughs, but it's a grown woman demanding a teenager take off his clothes. I'll admit, this is a huge double standard, because if there was a grown man asking a teenaged female to strip, people would have a problem with it instantly. But Peter is 16 years old here, and you specifically stated that Shuri being called a child was ridiculous in your Black Panther video, so I'll channel Dave Chappelle here. How old is 16 really? I am no science guy, but I don't think that's how momentum works. Once Peter exits the vehicle, he still has forward momentum, but begins to immediately slow, comparable to the bus itself, which continues at the same speed. All I'm saying is Peter should either have landed back on the roof of the van behind the opening, or at least dinged the edge of the opening on his way back down. That is absolutely not how momentum works. Listen up, Flat Earthers, I'm about to explain momentum here, so this should answer your dumbass questions about airplanes and the spinning Earth. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity of an object. In simple terms, momentum is the amount of motion in an object. Momentum can be transferred as demonstrated in Newton's cradle. This means that while Peter is on the bus, the bus's momentum is being transferred through his body. Because Peter and the bus are sharing momentum, when he is on the bus, he can move freely while that bus remains in motion. This is why he can walk up and down the aisle of that bus. If he were to hop, because he and that bus are sharing momentum, he would land in the same spot he jumped from, because that's how momentum works. If momentum worked like you and the silly flat earthers are suggesting, if you jumped while riding a moving bus, you would be slammed into the back of the bus as soon as you left your feet. We know that doesn't happen, and you can demonstrate this with a tennis ball inside a car. Next time you're in a car, gently toss a ball in the air while the car is moving. If the ball lands back in your hand, you will have disproven this flat earther talking point. Now, you are correct that Peter should have landed on top of the bus, but that's all to do with wind and nothing to do with momentum. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'll save you a seat next to me. Zendaya is adorable in this movie, but, well, all I'm saying is don't watch the entirety of Euphoria on HBO right before you watch her in this movie, because it will be a jarring juxtaposition. Everything wrong with Far From Home, ladies and gentlemen. An actor is capable of playing different characters. Also, jarring juxtaposition is also A, an edgier name in chef circles for the serpent turf. B, what my college girlfriend skip. I would totally kiss you, but I think I just threw up in my mouth a little. There is not a teenage male alive that would let a little vomit get in the way of some action. Spoken like a true virgin. The choice is yours. I hear you can get with this, or you can get with that. You can get with this, or you can get with that. You can get with this. This goes on for some time. To the man who brought us all together, our former boss, Tony Stark. And seriously, f*** you, Moomy. This is now two Spider-Man villains in a row that have been turned into essentially Iron Man villains that Spider-Man has to fight. Is it asking too goddamn much to have a Spider-Man movie be a f***ing Spider-Man movie? Maybe Sony should take this back over. You had me up until you suggested that Sony should take back over. Let me remind you that Sony gave us Spider-Man 3, The Amazing Spider-Man series, and Venom, four shit movies that bastardized the characters in those films. Marvel should own their characters. You know, because they're Marvel characters? Also, Mysterio is essentially the Mandarin all over again. A rather cool character who has literally been acting the whole time and is uninteresting as hell when his true colors shine. So way to go, Far From Home. You're the Iron Man 3 of Spider-Man movies. I'm sorry, but no. Mysterio was handled excellently in this film. This is how you take a character from a comic book and adapt them to the screen. Simply watching this film gives you an excellent primer for who the character is in the comic book, which is an illusionist, just like in the film. Compare this with Venom, which ruined the character's origins, motivations, and even his costume. 
But sure, we want Sony to take over. If Sony were the ones doing this movie, Mysterio would look like this. That's what it said on the news. And the news never lies. The news that the news never lies about the news is fake news. That's the joke. You suck, McBain! <laughs> oh, good thing MJ happened to be right by the drone projector that Peter caught in his webbing and they could have this awkward conversation on the bridge. Because then Peter would never find out Quentin Beck is a fake and a bad guy and this movie relies on way too much coincidental coincidences. Nonsense. Michelle has been following Peter because she suspected that he was Spider-Man. She didn't just happen to be by the drone projector. She was literally there at the fight. I am trying to fool 7 billion people here, including Nick Fury, who happens to be the most paranoid and most dangerous person on the planet. Not true. The most paranoid person on the planet is clearly Kanye West. And the most dangerous person on the planet is clearly Kanye West. Considering how sure he was that Obama wasn't born in the United States, I'm pretty sure the answer to both of those is Donald Trump. In case you confused it with Berlin, New Hampshire. I'm just here to point out that this was the only location gag that I didn't do in my parody video, and it just so happens to be the only one CinemaSins does in their video. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't think you know what's real, Peter. I just can't give enough sins for this movie wants to excuse as the work of drones that could never be the work of drones. Add 10 now. Oh, I will add 10 now because you're sending this absolute masterpiece of a scene. If you were good enough, maybe Tony would still be alive. But Tony's death in Endgame wasn't Peter's fault. That is totally not what Beck was saying. I mean, you literally heard, if you were good enough, maybe Tony would still be alive and came away with, it's your fault he died. Like, what? I am aware that there is going to be some bird-brained individual in the comment section trying to argue that is what Beck is implying here. And let me stop you before you begin typing, you moron. Beck is simply saying that if Peter were good enough, he may have been able to help stop Thanos before Tony sacrificed himself. Not that it's Peter's fault. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Look, this sequence is visually arresting, and that's worth praise. But it's undercut by the knowledge that all of this is being done by drones, which is hilariously impossible. Impossible? Like sticking to walls and stones with the ability to warp reality? That kind of impossible? It's easy to fool people when they're already fooling themselves. What does that even mean? At least in the context of this movie. Well, well, well. I would say that I'm surprised that you're purposefully misrepresenting a scene, but that's just your MO at this point. Beck's line comes on the heels of Peter unwittingly giving up the identities of his friends because Beck was using an illusion to appear as Nick Fury. That's the context. You're the head of security and your password is password? I, I don't feel good about it either. Movie has time for this. You gotta love CinemaSins admonishing movies for doing things that they do. It's so cute. It's literally not a Spider-Man movie if his love interest isn't in danger and needing him to rescue them. Six words. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Edith, give me some protection. Copy. If Beck has Edith, I'm not sure why he even needs the drones anymore. He has an entire satellite of weaponry at his disposal to do whatever he wants. You're aware that the entire satellite of weaponry consists almost entirely of those drones, right? Right? Hello, Gerald? Could Mother not make it? Holy sh this is a dark final beat for Flash Thompson. Almost like they might be setting him up for something more antagonisty in the next installment. Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. And trust me, he likes this. And here's J. Jonah Jameson, back now as an online news pundit, because I guess they felt the same way about J.K. Simmons in this role as they did James Earl Jones in the role of Mufasa, which is that no one could ever replace them. But it breaks continuity, pulls me out of the movie, and Carl Urban or Timothy Oliphant could have pulled off a slightly new different take on the character just fine. Jeremy thinks anyone other than J.K. Simmons should have been Jameson. That's worth these many sins. Also, does this mean this movie is in the same universe as Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies? Because it kind of does, even though they will tell you it does not. No, it absolutely doesn't mean that, because this is obviously a different character talking about a different Spider-Man. Do you get it yet? The multiverse. I had just finished my fruit cobbler, right? This sofa survives this. 